landowners in the western United States are being approached by aggregators who are seeking to contract carbon sequestration credits in anticipation of national greenhouse gas regulations that may substantially increase demand and prices over those of the current voluntary U.S. market. The U.S. did not sign the Kyoto Protocol regulating emission of greenhouse gases. However, 34 states have adopted or are adopting their own greenhouse gas regulations. Most will use cap and trade systems to first stabilize, then to reduce carbon dioxide and methane emissions that are believed to be contributing to global warming. Cap and trade systems work by establishing a quota of allowable emission credits. Emitters with extra credits may sell them, while those needing additional credits may either buy them or may create them. Credits are created by reducing emissions of other unregulated emitters or by recapturing and sequestering the pollutant. For instance, under Oregon's current greenhouse gas program, power plants have met required CO2 emissions reductions by sponsoring a wide range of mitigation projects, including planting riparian forests along the Deschutes River to capture and store carbon, and by installing newer, more energy efficient heating systems in local schools. Forests, pastures, and rangelands can store large amounts of carbon in vegetation and soil organic matter. Additional carbon stored as a result of changed land management may be sold if the amount sequestered can be adequately estimated and if assurances that it will remain sequestered are credible. Although there are many small buyers of carbon credits, the major U.S. market for trading carbon is the Chicago Climate Exchange, or CCX. It sells large diversified carbon contracts to businesses and other large users through an open auction process. The CCX will accept and sell carbon sequestration credits from forest, permanent grassland, and rangeland projects. The amount of carbon sequestered is estimated from computer models of specific land management practices within USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service land resource regions. Most landowners will probably need to join others through an aggregator in order to offer sufficient total carbon offset credits to interest the CCX in brokering their contracts. Aggregators may be commercial firms or existing local organizations such as woodlot owners associations, soil conservation districts, or watershed councils. Once carbon credits are verified by CCX, they are auctioned off and the proceeds are distributed. Auction prices of credits vary with supply and demand. Currently the price is about $2 per ton of CO2 equivalent. This would yield about $0.24 cents per acre for well-managed eastern Oregon rangeland. It is generally expected that the price will rise significantly if U.S. government regulation imposes a cap and trade system. However, the price will vary with a cap set, mitigation techniques allowed for offset emissions, proportion of cap emissions issued directly to current emitters, and other regulatory details. Terrestrial carbon sequestration projects in forests, pastures, and rangelands will have to compete favorably with other allowed mitigations. In Oregon, these alternatives have included increased energy efficiency projects, renewable energy material substitution, and transportation efficiency projects. This makes future prices for carbon credits very difficult to accurately predict.